Hello everyone, I'm the Saxy Gamer. Today we're here for just a kind of more casual thing. I'm going to talk about the uh, the upcoming year of 2019. We're going to recap 2018, and then we've also got the 10,000 subscriber question and answer part of the video as well. That's going to be happening in the second half of the video. Um, but to start things right off, uh, well, 2018 is over, and it was an absolutely incredible year for the channel. So it, I have been on YouTube for a long time. Probably I think 2013 was whenever I first made my channel, and in those first few years. I got maybe, I think I started the year with around 300 subs, and then in the year of 2018, I went from 300 to about 11,800 or something of the sort. I can't remember exactly what I'm at at the time I'm recording this video, but it's definitely somewhere around there. So there has been tremendous growth for this channel, all centered around Civ 6, and it is something that I am eternally grateful grateful for. So if you're new to the channel, welcome on in, and I'm, I'm glad that you've joined us, and hopefully we can grow an even bigger community in 2019. Uh, in the background, I haven't mentioned, uh, I'm just playing some PUBG today, I figured I would change it up, go with something a little bit different, just because as I've been on break for, uh, for like, the, the holiday season, I've been a little bit bored, I've been changing up, playing some different games. I, I used to play PUBG a lot, and, you know, not to brag or anything, but I, I, I was actually in the top 100 players in North America for PUBG, so I was playing a little bit over the weekend, I figured I would record it, and then it would make a pretty decent background gameplay for this commentary, so, um, you can feel free to just watch me dumpster some of these kids whenever I... <laughs> <laughs> just turn on them and obliterate them. But uh, yeah, that's that's the background. Um, but as far as what we did this year, we had, first off, we had the Governor Spotlight series, which started, I believe that started the first week of January. So that that's really, that's really where the channel started, is with that Governor Spotlight series. And that's where things started to take off. I actually got, that was the first time I actually had decent viewership on anything. Um, and then from there, we had some Rise and Fall news stuff, because... Rise and Fall did come out earlier uh, earlier this year, which is just absolutely ridiculous to me. I feel like it came out a long time ago, but no, it was it was earlier this year in 2018 that Rise and Fall came out, which I think is just just absolutely nuts. It's, fa it's amazing how fast time flies, but had a good amount of Rise and Fall news, and then whenever Rise and Fall launched, we started the Leader Spotlight series, and that was really like whenever the channel first, you know, actually started to take off a little bit, um, and we went through all 36 leaders in the game. We did the top five, or no, top three for each cat. Category and I man I I really enjoyed making the leader spotlight series I'm not really sure why but something about it was just it was so entertaining and it was just an enjoyable series so I'm actually kind of excited for whenever Gathering Storm comes out and I can do more of the leader spotlights. We did also go ahead and we started the Civ in Depth series so we did a few episodes on that there definitely will be more Civ in Depth that's coming out um, in the coming months whenever Gathering Storm comes out and there's a few more mechanics. The reason I haven't made too many more of those uh, lately is just because those videos take so long to make because there's so much math involved and so many things that I have to figure out and I never want to get any of that wrong because then I don't want to misinform people on the in-depth mechanics of the game because that'd be very bad, but there definitely will be more of that coming out with Gathering Storm and with some of the new mechanics that are introduced with that. We also had the Civ Tips series that started, which is one of my personal favorites as well. I know a lot of people tend to like that. It is very beginner friendly, but I mean, the reason I like it as well is because whenever I have to go back and like think about actually what goes through my mind whenever I'm making decisions in Civ, it helps me out as a player as much as it helps you guys to listen to it because every once in a while, you know, I, I, I tend to be a very quick player, which is why, you know, maybe that's probably because I played a lot of FPS games, you know, um, whenever I was younger, and that kind of got me into video games, but I'm very fast with my decision making, so it helps me every once in a while to slow down and actually think about things, and those of you that have watched me on stream sometimes, you know that I tend to just click through turns, like, <laughs> super fast, and it's a problem sometimes, but yeah, that's why I like the tips video, or the tips videos so much, is because it helps me slow down as well, and just realize what I'm thinking about, and realize what I should be thinking about. <clears throat> Um, what else did we have this year? We also had the Wonder Spotlight series that started, and that's currently going on right now. Um, I, I, I definitely do enjoy that series. I don't think I enjoy it quite as much as the Leader Spotlight series, but it is a fun series nonetheless, and it just kind of fits in with my overall goal of having some sort of content on every part of Civ 6, so we're definitely going to be continuing that series and going through until we finish all of the wonders in the game, which is probably going to take a good while. I would imagine we'll probably finish, I forget exactly how many wonders there are, but there's definitely more wonders than there are leaders in the game, so we'll probably finish that by, ooh, I don't even know, hopefully by, like, April or so. <laughs> Depends how fast I put out content, and that's something that we'll talk about here in just a little bit. 
As far as my favorite video for 2018, like my my favorite video that I produced, I would have to say it is without a doubt the Independence Day video. And I know that that, that video did not get particularly good viewership, but if you haven't seen it, you have to go back and watch it. It is just, it's so hilariously American that it is, it's, it's so much fun. Um, turn down your, your volume if you're wearing headphones, though, because otherwise you might suffer permanent ear damage because, oh my god, the, the soundtrack I used for it is just, <laughs> it's so bad. But that, that video was such a joy to make and just such a joy to produce, and whenever I finished it, I just watched it back, and I just, I couldn't help but laugh because it was just, it was just funny. So, um, if you haven't seen the Independence Day video, definitely go check that out because that is easily my, my favorite video that I've produced in 2018. Moving on to 2019, though, um, I, there's definitely going to be some changes that are going on, and obviously there's plenty of room to expand the channel. Um, so for one, obviously we're going to continue the series that we have going right now, so we're going to continue the Wonder Spotlights, we're going to continue doing Civ Tips, and we're going to continue um, doing some in-depth. I guess, I don't know if you could really call it continuing, because I haven't put out an episode in so long, but we are going to do some more Civ in-depth whenever uh, Gathering Storm comes out as well. Uh, I might do a few Gathering Storm news videos. I, it's been a long time since I've done any news videos, but I do quite enjoy making news videos. So, um, assuming that we get some more news videos, then I'll do that. Oh, I will also do the uh, the first impressions for the rest of the leaders. I know I've been slacking on that a little bit. Um, but as they're announced, I will make sure I get out some first impression videos on them. Unfortunately, I am going back to school next week, so that's going to really limit my video production time. I'm going to try my best to get out at least one video a week, but uh, as, as I get busier and busier as the semester progresses, then it's, you know, maybe the, the, the mileage may vary based on how much work I have and how much free time and if I'm stressed or not. So um, one of the things I would like to do, though, is get something that I can do that I can just, you know, either uh, produce in bulk or record in bulk and then upload. And I know gameplay is one of those things, but <laughs> if I'm being totally honest, I honestly don't even find my own gameplay that entertaining, so I don't expect you guys to, but if that is something that you guys do find entertaining, maybe you want to see more gameplay, let me know in the comments section below. Or if you have, like, any other related ideas of something that I could do, you know, maybe either short videos or um, things that I could record in bulk, then let me know in the comments section below. One of the other things that I've been thinking about is expanding the channel and expanding the content, because we've been doing Civ... Uh, well, we've been doing exclusively Civ, up, well, of course, except for this PUBG gameplay in the background right here, but <laughs> we've been doing exclusively Civ for my entire time on YouTube, and I don't think that that's a bad thing, because you have to start somewhere and you have to find a niche, but I, I do feel as though eventually I do want to expand to other games, because there's only so much of a community that we can grow so, uh, that we can grow solely based on Civ, so eventually I would like to go and expand to other games. The only problem is I have no idea what types of games I could expand to. Ideally, I would like to stick with strategy games, but the only problem is I don't really play very many strategy games outside of Civ. I mean, unless you count Dota 2 as a strategy game, which I play plenty of Dota 2, so... If that's something that you guys would want to see, maybe you want to see, um like, gameplay of Dota 2, because me and my friends tend to play Dota 2 pretty much daily as, as just, you know, like a sort of relaxation, chilling out with the boys kind of type of thing where we just play some games of Dota 2, so if you guys would want to see me record those and start uploading those as, like, just little commentary things, then I could certainly do that. If you have any other ideas for games, um, as far as which games I play, uh, I play very few that are related to Civ, and that's kind of the scary thing about it, is that I want to pick some games that are going to be at least somewhat related to Civ, because I don't want to alienate you guys that have joined the community for Civ, um, but I also, you know, want to find something that can uh, perhaps bring in new people, bring in a, a wider audience, and things like that. So, if you have any ideas, put them down in the comment section below. I'll talk about what other games I play a little bit later whenever we do the Q&A. And speaking of the Q&A, let's go ahead and start that right now. So I do have a few questions here. I don't have everybody's. Um, so if your question wasn't featured, I'm sorry. But uh, it just kind of just kind of worked out like that, that uh, I, I, I don't want to, you know, make this video go on for 30 minutes. It's probably going to go on for 22 because I believe that that's how long this uh, this PUBG gameplay is because it was a, it's a pretty good game. But um, let's go ahead and get started with the Q&A. So our first question here is, let's see, which one do we want first? Let's go with this one. Um, from this guy whose name is Korean, and there's not a single chance in the world that I am ever going to be able to pronounce it. But uh, he asked, what games do I remember playing in my childhood? And, <laughs> man, this, the, whenever I thought about this question, it, it, it was a lot, of, a lot of fond memories and reminiscing, and also watch me just fail and land right on this rock in PUBG while I was trying to jump in the water. But <laughs> um, games I played in my childhood. So 
I started out, what was the first game that I really played? Uh, probably Roller Coaster Tycoon, like the original. I think it was the deluxe version that had the uh, the two expansions that were uh, that were the expansions to the original game. But that that's probably the very first game that I ever played, like, a lot. And I played so much of Roller Coaster Tycoon, like, every single day before school and after school, I would sit there playing Roller Coaster Tycoon, and I loved it so much. That was... That's easily one of my favorite games that I've played of all time, and even a few years ago, I downloaded it again on Steam because it was on Steam for, like, $2, and I played it, and man, I just enjoyed the heck out of it. It's just, it's such a fantastic game. Aside from that, though, um, what else did I play? I played a lot of Minecraft, obviously. I think that everybody in my general uh, age range probably played a ton of Minecraft because that was just what was hip. Um, I played a lot of Guitar Hero. Uh, <laughs> that was probably, oh man, I was probably in third or fourth grade whenever I, whenever I got Guitar Hero on the, on the PS2, and I played so much Guitar Hero. Uh, Guitar Hero 2 and 3 were the, were the ones that I really played a lot, and that was... That was a game I very much enjoyed, and that's probably part of what got me into playing saxophone as well, was just that, that musical that musical drive from playing Guitar Hero, so <laughs> that was another big one. And then I think the other really big one was Star Wars Battlefront 2, which, once again, I think that's a game that a lot of people probably played whenever, um, you know, like in my general age range, that if you had a PS2 and you were a kid, you probably played Battlefront 2, because that was just, it was such a cool game, and yeah, I probably put hundreds, if not thousands of hours into that game, playing that with friends, playing that by myself, it was just absolutely fantastic. So, good question, and, uh, yeah, that, 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 that made me reminisce quite a bit. Um, this other guy, uh, who also, who has a tough name, uh, Znitschk, <laughs> I don't know, he, uh, he, he told me not to worry about butchering up his username, so, uh, I, I, I won't worry about it, but he asked, what am I studying, and is there a particular reason that I wanted to study it, and that's, that's, once again, a pretty good question, um, because for those of you who don't know, I am a college student, and that's why, you know, a lot of the time for half of the year, I, uh, I can't really produce that many videos, but I'm, I'm doing a dual major in nuclear engineering and mechanical engineering, and as far as the reason why I wanted to do that, uh, I've been interested in nuclear engineering for a long time, probably since I was in, I don't know, maybe I'm, since I was like 12 or 13. I don't really know why, honestly, but I think it's one of those things that's just really futuristic and really cool that... For some reason, I just felt it fit my personality, and it's it's one of those things that, you know, you like you you hear about it, and you, it it just it just makes you genuinely interested whenever you talk about it, and when you read things about it. So I wanted to do that for a long number of years. So I I went into college doing the uh, the the nuclear engineering, and then as I got through school, <laughs> this is gonna sound like so I don't know, so just like. Uh, like I'm bragging or something, but I don't mean to, but as I was going through school, so I, I, I went into college with a lot of AP credits, and for those of you who don't know what AP credits are, it's pretty much just like, uh, throughout high school, you can take certain college level classes and get college credit for them, so that way whenever you get into college, you don't have to take them, so I, I did a lot of that in, uh, in, in high school, and for those of you who are international, I think, I think that your version of that would be like the, the IB credits, but I did a lot of those in high school, and then as I was going through college, I really didn't have that many, like, classes that I actually needed to take. So, I, <laughs> and here's where it's going to sound super douchey, but, um, <laughs> I, I, like, I thought it was just kind of, like, too easy in that I, I had a lot more time than I really, you know, I was wasting a lot of time because I didn't have that many classes. So, I just picked up a, a second major in mechanical engineering because it's a closely related to field, uh, field to nuclear, and I figured that it would set me up for a better future just because I have more options for jobs I can take, and it's not going to cost me any more money because I still, you know, I have the same number of semesters in school regardless, so I figured I would just pick up that major as well. So, yeah, nuclear and mechanical engineering, and it is, it's a very good time, and I very much enjoy it, and for some reason I feel as though it just fits my personality, but good question, and thank you for that one. Um, up next, oh, this is, this is easily one of my favorite questions that was asked, uh, from AC Esquire. He asked, if I was a leader in Civ 6, what would be my leader ability? And it took me, I had to think about this one for so long because it was just, it was one of those complex questions that, you know, you hear it and you're like, man, that's really good, but I, I don't really know off the top of my head what my leader ability would be. But after thinking about it for a while, I, I decided. So my my general personality is like, I'm, I'm a very calm person. I'm, I'm very laid back. I, I very rarely ever get worked up. 
So for that reason, I think that my leader ability would be that all of my cities require one less amenity. So that way everybody would be, you know, either content or happy most of the time. And it would work out. I like <laughs> I tried to think of an ability that would be realistic and, you know, wouldn't be overpowered or anything. So that, that's what I came up with. So, you know, maybe if anyone from Firaxis or the Civ development team is, you know, listening and you want to add me into the game as either a leader or a great person, you know, minus one amenity requirement in all cities, you know, <laughs> you could put that in. But yeah, um, so thank you for that question because that that was that was a fantastic question. But definitely minus one amenity in all and uh, minus one amenity requirement in all cities, um, and maybe something like bonus to great musicians or something like that. Just because I play the saxophone, you know, the saxy gamer, that whole spiel. Um, but definitely the amenity thing for one, and a uh, great question. All right, next we have some questions about the meta of Civ 6 with Gathering Storm. We got two people that asked questions. There might have been more, but uh, I'm sorry if I didn't include you. But pretty much the gist of these questions is how do I think the meta of Civ is going to change with Gathering Storm? And this is this is a really hard question for me to answer just because I don't really know all of what is in Gathering Storm right now. I I've I only know as much as other people know because like I've not received any any like special insider look or anything like that, but from what I can see, I honestly don't think the meta is going to change all that much. Because if you think about it, like, there really isn't anything to change the tall versus wide meta. I, mean, I think wide is still going to be unanimous, unanimously better than tall just because of the district system. I do think that there are going to be some good leaders that work tall, especially the Inca. So I think that might be a nice thing. It's not really going to change the whole meta, but for some of the leaders, I think that tall will definitely be a more viable strategy in Gathering Storm. Uh, I definitely think that the chopping meta, I think that chopping is still going to be a very big part of the meta, but I don't think it's going to be as big a part as it is right now, simply because of the nerfs that they're doing to chopping. So if you're unaware with what they're doing, they're making it so that now production overflow doesn't receive modifiers. So, you know, like previously, if you ran limes, which is the one that doubles production towards your defensive buildings, and then you had one turn left on walls and you chopped, then the overflow production would get that double production as well. But now how it's going to be is that you get double production for the production that is uh, finishing the walls. And then after that, it removes the water, the, the, the water fire, the modifier for the remaining production that is overflowing into whatever you choose to produce next. So I think that that is going to hurt the, the chopping meta and all of and the production overflow meta. But I don't think it's going to kill it. I still think that that's going to be a pretty crucial part of the game, especially for like rushing wonders and things. I still think that's going to be a big part of the game. So I don't think it's going to change it too much. One of the other things that I think is probably going to be interesting is how how the natural disasters change up the settling meta, because really, oh, actually, I, I guess the, the, the trade route changes are going to change up the settling meta as well, because how it is right now in Civ is it's pretty much just settle fresh water 99% of the time, and coast is not really anywhere, it's, it's not as good as settling on fresh water. Because you get less housing and, there, and your cities are more vulnerable towards sea attacks, which really just sucks. But I think that this might actually change in Gathering Storm because there might be some bonuses um, whenever you settle on coastal tiles. If, if they get flooded, maybe they'll get some more yields. The other really nice thing is that trade routes now are going to get extra gold if they travel across water tiles or um, through certain other features. So I think that this could make coastal settling a little bit better because then you could get really good trade routes that go out of your cities. And that is something that I, I really hope is actually like significantly changed because if if they make it so that settling coastally allows you to play a, a really strong economic game and allows you to function as a trade civilization which is what i would expect if you're settling coastally then i would have I, like i think that that would be really cool and i really hope that that's actually how it works so hopefully we'll see a, a little a, a little bit of a trend away from the strictly settling on freshwater thing um because i think that that would just be a nice way to change up the game but yeah, there's there's plenty of other things in the game that are probably going to change up a little bit, um, especially with natural disasters, you know, and the, the uh, availability to get better tile yields, but also, you know, maybe explode or something like that, or have a volcano just absolutely wreck all your stuff. So I think all of that could make slight changes to the game, but overall, I don't think that the meta is going to change too drastically, but once again, there might be some sort of uh, features in Gathering Storm that we don't know a lot about yet that could change the, the game drastically, so I guess we shall see as we get more information. All right, and up next we have uh, two questions about me playing the saxophone, <laughs> which I, I was on, oh, that was a nice Kobe as well in the, uh, in the PUBG gameplay. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh man, I, I I love just chucking chucking grenades long range and then just screaming Kobe whenever you do it. And that's it's 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 a moral obligation that you scream Kobe every time you uh, you toss a nade in PUBG. But um, Caleb Presley asked, how long have I been playing the saxophone and do I march? So I've been playing the saxophone since I was I don't know probably eight or nine. So it's probably been it's probably been about 12 years um, since I started playing the saxophone, so it's it's a good amount of time. And I don't march anymore, like I don't march in, in college band just because it's just too much time and I would definitely have no time for YouTube if I was if I was marching in college band. Um, but it is something I've thought about and you know, I just eventually decided against it. I did march in high school though and, and, and I am still on, um, I'm, I'm a member of, of a band staff, I'm, on, I'm a saxophone instructor on band staff, so... <laughs> So I, I'm still involved with the whole the whole marching band thing because I, I like I do I help the saxophones out and then I also do uh, like I teach uh, like marching basics and stuff of the sort. So yeah, I'm relatively involved with marching, but not too much anymore. Uh, Sly Rooster is commenting on with this is from the the Inca video I believe, um, asking about the mouthpiece I'm playing on and if I'm a funk and jazz guy or more of a classical sax player. So yeah, the uh, the, the mouthpiece I'm playing on is a. It's a Beechler Bellite, I believe it is what it is. I think it's I think it's a seven facing. It's 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 the same thing that Marienthal plays, um, and yeah, I I really like it. It's it's a nice it's a nice bright mouthpiece, but it also has the capability to be dark, and it's just it's one of those bright mouthpieces that also doesn't sound too shrill and like flat, as some of them tend to do, especially like the smooth jazz ones. Oh, don't even get me started on smooth jazz, but uh, but yeah, I I really enjoy it, um, and I'm much more a funk and jazz guy than classical. I, I used to play a lot of classical back back in the day, um, but ever since I, I graduated high school and I spent a little a, like a lot more or a lot less time playing saxophone, then I've kind of just uh, gravitated towards playing jazz, and that, that's that's what I do in school. Like I'm I'm part of my school's jazz band, and uh, and yeah, I play sax in there. So jazz is really really the way I go nowadays. But uh, yeah, I think that's 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 all the questions we really have time for because we're almost reaching the end of this PUBG gameplay. Um, so thank you for uh, everybody that happened to uh, you know join the community this year. We've had a we've had a really great year, and it's been something that is uh, it's it's just it's honestly kind of amazed me because it was <laughs> YouTube is one of those things that. Whenever I started doing YouTube, like, I never really expected anything to come out of it, you know, and I believe that whenever I started this year, I was like, all right, my goal for the end of year, the year is 500 subscribers, and then we got into the year a little bit, and I, I hit 500 subscribers by, like, I don't know, probably, like, February or March, and I was like, wow, all right, now the goal for the year is 1,000 subscribers, and then I think I hit 1,000 subscribers in, I want to say May, because I believe it was right after I started the summer break, um... So and then I I I had hit a thousand subscribers and I was like oh my god this is like insane like now now you know five thousand subs for the end of the year I was like that's never gonna happen because you know it took me until May to get a thousand so there's no way that I'm gonna hit five thousand by the end of the year and then eventually you know we started uh I I think it was right around whenever I got whenever I released those uh those those top videos like the top three sieves in each category I think I think we got a lot more subscribers that joined from that and it was one of those things that like I hit that and I was like wow there's actually a chance that I might reach 10,000 subscribers by the end of the year. And then as I got into into like uh, to school again, then it was like, all right, now we're slowing down. Probably not going to hit 10K subs by the end of the year. Uh, but then eventually it ended up working out anyways. And, uh, and now here we are with over 11,000 subscribers. So maybe the goal for next year is going to be 50,000 subscribers, which is, you know, it's a, it's a bit of a steep goal. But I think it's something that maybe we could do. And uh, here we're just about to to reach the eventual uh, chicken dinner of this 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 PUBG gameplay and uh, yeah uh, this 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 PUBG game this is the first time I've played PUBG in a long time uh, like I haven't played PUBG for probably a few months and I just hopped back in and I was like you know what let's 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 see if I still have the PUBG skill and ended up getting a good chicken dinner so uh, thank you everyone for watching and thank you for everybody that asked questions uh, if if your question didn't get get oh man didn't get answered I'm sure we can do another Q and A sometime in the future and uh, maybe I'll get to your questions around then so thank you everyone for watching and thanks for a great 2018 and uh, hopefully I'll see you next year in 2019 for some more Saxy Gamer Civilization 6 content and maybe we even expand a little bit so thank you for watching and goodbye.